What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Kazooie. In the last episode, we finished up Treasure Trove Cove, which was quite the adventure by the beach. It was plenty of fun. And uh, we were going to. I think we unlocked the 180 note door. However, you'll also notice that over here, there was a shock spring jump pad, or whatever it's called, that we can now use. So while we're over here, that is what we're gonna do. You can see there's Clanker's Cavern. If you want to place all your pieces into the picture, just press the right trigger. That'll speed things up a little bit. <laughs> this ain't a speed run, but you know. Gotta go fast, right? So there's Clanker's Cavern, and you'll notice, I think that's an area we've been to before. I had accidentally gone to before. And I guess, honestly, that makes sense, <laughs> just because... When we did unlock the 180 note door, was it in here? Did we go in here? Or was it the other place? I think this was the... The secret pot. Yeah. Oh, okay. When I opened up the 180 door, I was like, I feel like it would be kind of early for them to expect a player to get 180 notes when it's only been, you know, two levels. So, oops, that's the wrong button. Still getting used to the Xbox, con Xbox controls, so bear with me, guys. <laughs> okay. This is, yeah, that's right. I, before I was like, okay, we'll check this out eventually. Can we do anything with that? No, I think we're gonna have to do some swimming. I swear we're able to unlock this area. Ah, there's the answer. But yeah, I should also note that when I did originally record this um, to try to Let's play it. My belly's big, it's rather neat, it's ears, since I have seen my feet. <laughs> Should maybe get that looked at by a doctor. That's not too uh, great for you. Oh, and we can activate this switch too, and that should get us access to that other area. Nice. So we'll explore a little bit before we head into Clanker's Cavern. But yeah, when I originally recorded this on my N64 a couple of years ago, I only really got through Treasure Trove Cove, so all of this from here on out it's been a few years since I've really played, so patience is a virtue, as those of you who participate in Hero vs. Zero would know. Oh, we've got another Brentilda. What do you have to say for us? Grunty wears a flea circus under that repulsive dress of hers. Yikes. She's also got this nasty pet dog whose name is Ripper. Sounds intimidating. My sister sings in her own band, Grunty and the Monster Mob. They're awful. <laughs> I love the creativity of them. Okay. And now we can hit this. So we can enter that area. I think that's going to be another area with jiggies and such. Was there something else I was looking to get in here? Oh, wait, there was a mumbo token, right? For some reason, I thought there was a flight pad in here. How else are we supposed to be able to get the uh, mumbo token that's up there? Right? Can I jump on top of this? Oh, I can. So, there's the answer to my question. <laughs> okay, so before we go into Clanker's Cavern, I know some of you are probably very excited for Clanker's Cavern. I will say it's very cool, and I actually really like the level, but I'm not a huge fan of water mechanics, just in general, um, swimming. And so, I'm a little bit hesitant, to say the least. But alright, while we're here, I think we'll have enough Jiggies to actually fill this one out too. So this is for Bubble Gloop Swamp. Yep, we got plenty. Ooh, look at that environment. Bubble Gloop Swamp. <laughs> I like that level quite a bit. But, it'll be a minute before we're there, so patience. Any Mumbo Tokens or anything of that sort in here? Doesn't appear so. So... Onward we'll go, and finally, get to enjoy Clanker's Cavern. Oh, it's been so nice to play this game again. What's also interesting is, I just recently have, you know, played a couple other games from my childhood. I played through Mario 64 on the Mario 3D All-Stars collection, 100%ed that, and had a lot of fun doing so. Same with Sunshine. And it's pretty interesting to compare some of the game design choices between Mario 64 and Banjo. I'll probably talk about them a little bit as we play, but for the time being... 
Just the one new move to find this time. But it's hidden well. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out. So here we are in Clanker's Cavern. Music's pretty great. We've still got more of these guys to deal with. Listen to the music for a moment. <laughs> so you can see it's kind of got this whole, like, metal dealio going on. And what is this? Oh, I thought I could duck under them. I guess not. Oh, and it took two health? Wow. So you can just kind of preemptively do one of Kazooie's attacks to, to get rid of it. We have another one of those golden feathers, which we'll find out more about eventually. Got ourselves a mumbo token. Lovely. But yeah, it's kind of like a machine-type aesthetic. Thank you. Oh, why did I... No! <laughs> that was... <laughs> Great start, Nick. Great start. <laughs> For some reason, I just, like, totally spaced out. I saw it, and I was like, Oh, that's, uh... An enemy's gonna come out of that, isn't it? Huh. Must be nice. <laughs> like, I don't know why I totally spaced out. <laughs> Either way, we don't need to walk all the way around like we did last time. So, we can just kind of approach from this end. And we'll be just fine. For this one last note. Oh, it made its way back. Whoa, camera. <laughs> Hello. That's always one of the things with old games in general, but especially these older 3D games. Getting the camera right. Alright, so we got ourselves a Jinjo, which is always nice. Anything else underwater here that I'm missing? Probably not. So now we'll head on over here. Again, the music notes. Kind of showing us where we need to go. Let's not miss any of them. And would you look at that? Bzz, I'm Clanker, which is garbage grinder. Clanker not like dirty water, want fresh air. So you can see, Clanker is stuck underwater here. There's a chain down there that is um, holding him down. But he wants that fresh air, so it's up to us to rescue him. And if I recall correctly, I think I just spotted one of our um, honeycomb pieces. Let's see if I can accurately climb up this vent. Yep, there it is. Okay. So one more, which should be in here somewhere. I honestly don't actually remember. <laughs> um, and we'll have a, a whole new... Honeycomb piece. Extra life. Lovely. Not that it matters much. Can we jump on this? That's what we can do. And then we can climb up here. Okay. And of course, it's another mumbo token. We're doing really well on the mumbo tokens here. Is there anything else I'm really concerned with here? Not really. Okay, well, I think... So there's more you can do if you work with Clanker a little bit. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Like I said, I tend to procrastinate when it comes to the underwater segments of levels. Let's see here, do I need a Talon Shot to get up this? Probably. It's a pretty steep slope. Did I hear a help? I think I did. We'll see. Got some uh, high stakes platforming going on here. Get all these items. We're already like full, so this is technically wasting them. Granted, it's probably okay. And an extra life. That's it. All right. Well, I guess we can pick those up. All right, now I think it's time to take care of some of this underwater business. You can see there are quite a few areas that we can swim into. So let's let's start exploring. I think we did not come in this one. This is a different one. So let's see what's over here. Oh my goodness, it's a mumbo token. <laughs> I'm looking for jiggies. Come on, Banjo. All right, we'll replenish our air real quick and then we'll check out this other passage. Again, it's been a minute since I've played, so forgive me for not taking optimal paths through the level. Oh, a Jinjo. Nice. 
So that's two out of the five Jinjos. Alright, we'll keep making our way. Obviously there's a lot going on up there. We'll get to that eventually. For the time being, let's check out this area over here. Um, but anyways, those, those differences between Mario 64 and Banjo, one of the things that was coming to mind was that Mario 64 has you leave the level every single time you get a Power Star, whereas Banjo does not. And eventually that's something they change, but snippet mutants are we. Jigsaw is ours. Fight us. You must. Okay. And you guys also, uh, sorry about that, you probably, okay, wow, you guys are really killing it with the, uh, <laughs> with the attacking. My depth perception is, like, super far off right now, but, okay. Alright, yeah, these things will not be- whoa! I have, like, no idea if this outer ring is elevated compared to the outside- yeah, it looks like it is. Interesting. But you guys probably heard my phone go off. I, um, I'm waiting on interview invites for medical residency applications right now, so I'm like, neurotically checking my email and stuff, because a lot of times, the dates fill up super fast. His beaten snippet mutants are we. Yours is prize. Ah, uh, why, thank you. Our first jiggy of Clanker's Cavern. And is there a note up there? There is, okay. But yeah, and then some programs will even send out more interview invites or, yeah, more invites than there are interview spots available, making it a first-come, first-served thing, and they fill up in, like, a minute or two. It's pretty ridiculous, um, and very much not really respectful of the applicants, in my opinion. But, that's the name of the game, so that's the game we play. But, um, back to Mario 64 and Banjo. It's interesting that in Mario 64, the game pulls you out of the level every time you get a star and then you have to go back in. And then in Banjo, if you get a Jiggy, you just continue exploring the level. Honestly, I probably generally prefer the way Banjo does it, but I understand the appeal of Mario 64's approach, right? Um, if you force the player to reload every single time, you obviously pad the game time. But what might be more important is that you are able to change the level a little bit, and so you'll see sometimes different placements of enemies, um, different items, and maybe even some obstacles change. And in Mario 64, it wasn't a huge deal. I don't think they really took advantage of that too much, just ch sometimes changing like, oh, Koopa is here now, or now you can use this cannon, or, you know, that sort of thing. But in Sunshine, in some of the later games, I know they really took advantage of that by changing the stage every single time for the different missions. But, all right, that was pretty cool. So we successfully obtained that. Um, Jiggy down there, obviously because Banjo's, you know, looking for some oxygen. Uh, doesn't have the luxury of doing his little Jiggy dance while he's down there. And I'm just, why am I collecting these? I guess I was just drawn to them. The camera's struggling a little bit. <laughs> Looks like there are some eggs in here. And then I think there are notes. We're obviously no, we're not going to pick them up because I don't want to waste them like I just did the red feathers. Though I don't think it'll be too problematic, admittedly. Alright, so we'll pick up a little bit more oxygen. And then I think we can go down here and we'll pick up some notes. Which are a much more meaningful collectible. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the difference in the game design of being taken out of a world each time you need to... Each time you basically accomplish a mission. Personally, I think... Overall, I don't like it because I end up replaying parts of the level that are like the intro parts or whatever um, super frequently, and that's not really fun for me, unless they're maybe particularly challenging or well-designed. But at least in Mario 64, the levels are never big enough that it's really that obstructive, or it's like never really that much to play through. Some of the later levels, though, like Tick Tock Clock and stuff, it, it can be a bit much to climb the level over and over again. All right, so... Listen to this music. So we got that fish going around. I think that is our source of air bubbles for the time being. So we're gonna start, where, where is it? It's over here, okay. We are awfully close to dying. Hello there. Hi, I'm Gloop. Grab my bubbles if you're low on oxygen. I am low on oxygen. Whew. Wait, what, only one? 
I was gonna say, excuse me? I thought it was gonna like fill up my oxygen completely. Okay, so I hear the whistling, so there's a Jinjo down here. Can I get this, please? Okay, all right, so we've got <laughs> not a lot of time down here to get all of these notes. A Jinjo there. And to release Clanker. Forgive me if I focus for a moment. Um, actually, we're gonna we're gonna turn around and pursue Gloop this way because it'll be easier to consecutively get Bubbles if we're following him the way that he's moving. And in the meantime, we're gonna try to unlock Clanker here by going in and out of this keyhole. And while we're going this way, in, in case, I don't know, because of the cutscene or whatever it may be, in the event that they still have me losing oxygen, I'm gonna pick up this Jinjo so I'm not, I don't have to like mad dash back to the surface. Okay, give me this air bubble. Oh! <laughs> the optics on that bubble were pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Like magnified banjo. What? Can I? Or my depth perception is just not on point right now. All right, we are gonna have to find Gloop and track Gloop down for this air, this air, because we are we are desperate right now. All right, one more and we should be good. Okay. <laughs> I just realized the sound effect Gloop makes is very Gloop. <laughs> Maybe a little bit higher pitch than I gave it credit for, but... Alright. So if you go through the key three times, it'll unlock, and now Clanker no longer has to sit in this dirty water and can instead get some fresh air. And we've earned ourselves a jiggy. Clanker has fresh air. You find reward on Clanker's back. Okay, so we successfully got the Jinjo, I think we got all the notes, and we unlocked Clanker. So next up, Oxygen. <laughs> and we successfully made it up top. Alright. So there's quite a bit we can do with Clanker now. First thing we're gonna do is hop on top, and we'll pick up some of these notes. Oops. Their elevation is changing. And then, of course, we've got a Jiggy to collect, too. Do you like that double task? Bzz. Clanker's teeth hurt now. Eat too much garbage. Help Clanker. Oh, we'll help you out, alright. So we can climb all the way up here. And go over here. Unfortunately, that's not unlocked. Oh. What? <laughs> so, when you do the the attack with Kazooie, it like... What's it called? It recoils a little bit. And I guess my angle must have been less than optimal. Because I recoiled right off of it. Either way, I mean, we had to come down here anyways, right? There are plenty of music notes to collect. Assuming you don't walk past them like that. And it's not too much of a hassle to get back up on. Clanker. But you can see that the movement, especially because we can't use the Talon Trot, isn't quite as quick as it was in some of the other levels. Because we spend a lot of time in the water and under the water. Alright. Okay, now let's pick this up. Awesome. So I think that's our third Jiggy here. No, fourth. Okay, so we are we are cruising along. I messed that up. <laughs> I thought I could jump up there, but but alas, I cannot. And I saw some notes over this way, so we'll definitely want to make our way up there. I think we can do so from over here. Normally, I think we went to the right last time, but this time we're going to want to go over here, because I think we can climb up this. Exactly. And I hear a Jinjo, so let's see. I think, is the Jinjo in here? Yep. Nice. 
Can I can I get out now? There we go. All right, just to make sure we don't like sli slide down and then I have to climb all the way back up again. Can Talon Trout to be safe? All right, and then anything in here? We'll find out. There it is. There's the second one. So we boosted up our health meter again. Nice. Got to clean seven honeycombs now. Okay. So what else do we want to do right now? Can we go up on this? I don't think so. But I think we can go on top of this blowhole. Oh! I knew we could go in <laughs> from there, but I didn't intend to do that. Either way, I mean, we're, we're here, right, I guess? So here's a grunty switch. We'll hit it. <clears throat> so that does that. What else are we going to do? Um, I mean... Can I walk out this way? Yes? Okay, I guess so. So for the time being, we'll do this. You can see these sort of like saw blades going. They're moving pretty quickly. Although admittedly, I didn't really think about it much and just held forward there. And it worked out all right. So I guess we take those, right? <laughs> what happens over here? Oh, we fell down here. What's in here? Interesting. So we can probably... We can get a lot of stuff done here. However, I don't know if we how easy it is to get on this flight pad. I'm not sure it's super easy. So while we have the flight pad, let's make our way over there. Towards this other high up area. And see what we can make of it. Ah, yes, this area. Here's Bottles to teach us a new move. This move uses Biko's wings as a shield against the bad guys. Cool. Does it make me invulnerable? Sure does. Hold the right or left trigger and push the right stick right. Keep the right or left trigger held and use the left stick to move around. Use it wisely though, as this move requires gold feathers and you can only carry 10 of them. Here, take these five valuable gold feathers with you. You've learned all my new moves for this world. The rest is up to you. Okay. So, let's do it. <laughs> I love the music when you do this. Alright. So yeah, these are the invulnerability um, feathers, I guess. They're pretty cool. I don't remember actually really using them for much more than these types of sections. I think it's time-based. It might look like they're being used as I would potentially get hit, and so they would take the place of a hit, but... No, I don't, I don't actually think that's the case. Alright. Now we can tend to some of this other stuff. Got a lot to explore. So what do we want to start with? Is this the starting area? No, it's the green one. The one that's different. I love... It's so cool that they have this whole interior design for Clanker. Right? Like... Like, look at this. It's so cool. It's like a rusty metal, but it still kind of looks like the insides of, uh, I don't know, an actual, like, fish and stuff, I guess, with, like, the rib cage and the the pinkish muscular, vascular-esque, I don't know, tissue description. All right, so basically, we got a little obstacle course here. This one is next, so we'll go through that. And what's next? Up here? I think we can do this sort of jump through it. Nice. And we got one down here. That tentacle does not look like it's our friend. Tentacle not friend confirmed. So we've gone through that one. And now there are two over here. I think we're doing okay on time. Only got one more underwater left. We just gotta really not get hit by the tentacle and I think we'll be okay. There we go. Oh, so it raises the water level. So that's how we can reach that. Nice. Alright, so we've earned ourselves another Jiggy, friends. <laughs> okay, is there anything else going on down here? We can end we can exit that area on the left. Oh, we can activate the, the flying pad again. So it wasn't really that far out of our reach. Do I really want to go to get those golden feathers? Not really. Um, although, <laughs> I guess we'll take that one. 
I'm more curious what's down here. This looks a little bit more difficult to access, meaning it might be a little bit more valuable, because that's how things tend to go in games. It's also worth noting, we're only 15 notes away from having all of the requisite notes, and it seems we've been spit out Clanker's gills. All right, well, we'll have to make our way back in to finish exploring. But first, I want to see what's happening up here. Aha! I knew it. Look at this view. Again, just taking the time to appreciate the HD version of this game. How beautiful it looks. And it really does look beautiful. Sometimes, you know, old games, especially from the N64 era, don't really translate well to, first of all, remasters in general, um, let alone just modern day gaming with how they look. But this game really fits well. So eight, that means I think we only have, what, there's like one, one more really, plus the, the Jinjo. Uh, that was probably not smart of me. But hey, you live and learn. Unless you die. <laughs> then you don't live. Um, Alright, so we are going to do some clanker dentistry magic right here. And we're going to get rid of this tooth that needs some... Need some work, and wow, this is proving difficult to aim. But, you know, it's not too bad. Well, <laughs> we'll get it eventually. We've got 100 eggs, right? <laughs> Come on. There we go. Ah, this tooth not hurt now. So that is one of them. I think he has a second tooth that needs work, though. Is that, did you guys see that? Is Clanker watching me? I think he was. Huh, that's pretty neat. Also, shout out to Clanker, just looking great. Typical rare aesthetic. Okay, let's aim. Man, this platform itself is a lot more wobbly than the other one. Nice, we got rid of that one there too. Toothache this side, gone. Clanker swallowed reward. <laughs> Teeth all better now. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. You swallowed the reward. All right, looks like we're gonna have to jump inside Clanker's blowhole there again. <laughs> if we want to get this last Jiggy. So, oh, perfect timing. So if you swallowed it, it's maybe this way? Right? Yeah, I think so. This is, for those of you that, I guess, have seen or maybe remember from the title screen, this is one of the rooms that is shown on the title screen for Clanker's Cavern, and wow, so, how do we get up there, though? We we'll probably have to fly. There's a Mumbo token, and there's the Jiggy. Oh, interesting! So it, it bends the tooth inward, and it becomes the platform for the collectible. I never realized that, and that is really cool. But I don't really know how to get that. I think, if I recall correctly, actually, or just kind of what makes sense, we need to um, swim in to the teeth from both sides. And I think over there we're going to find our last three remaining notes. There's one, there's two, and there is three. Lovely. You found all 100 notes on this world. Well done. Awesome. Okay. So I think this side should be the mumbo token. I probably don't even need to dive underwater. Let's see here. Can I swim in this area? Yeah, I can. Nice. All right. There's a mocha mumbo token. <laughs> I love the little um, phrase he says. I, I don't know if they've actually confirmed it. Yeah, look, Clanker's totally following me with his eyes. That's so cool. But it's like a ekum tokum. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm pretty sure they've actually confirmed what it says, but I don't remember it. And then... Alright. So that's nine. Now the question is... Where is the last Jinjo? I think I might have. Like, just vaguely recalled hearing a cry for help in here. And I don't think we found a Jinjo in here. But it would make sense for there to be one. Is there one in here? 
Is it down there? I feel like I keep seeing it out of the corner of my eye. Nope, that's just a red feather. Hmm. This is the trouble with these types of games. Now I'm missing one collectible, and I don't know where it's missing from. So now we gotta do some exploration while keeping our ears wide open to listen for cries for help or whistles. We can fly up here and, and see. I don't think it was over in that other area. Maybe I should try to be a little bit more quiet so I don't talk over their cries for help. Is it possible to stay flying moving into the next screen? Oh, no it's not. Okay, and yeah, they're not in there. Hmm. Well, then I guess it doesn't seem like they're in Clanker. Although I would expect one of the Jinchos to be in here, right? We came in from there. I think we exited this way once, too. We can briefly take a look here and see if there's anything going on. Maybe down there? Ah! Sneaky! Sneaky! Alright, so we will very carefully circle around the Jinjo and struggle to pick up the Jiggy. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. There we go. We've got our last Jiggy. And with that, we've completed Clanker's Cavern. Also, yeah, I don't think I've actually shown it before, but... The, the pause screen shows you all the different collectibles, how many Jinjos you've got, uh, how many, you know, eggs, all the different items you have, Mumbo tokens and, and Jiggies and notes, and it's got great music too. So, if those of you who are listening to the Banjo-Kazooie soundtrack, now that you've started watching this Let's Play and are feeling inspired to do so, one, thank you, two, excellent job, great choice, and three, be sure to listen to that pause screen music. I feel like pause screen music is often overlooked, but can really put in a lot of work. I'm trying to think of other good pause themes, though, because I feel like they always go under the radar. But there are some really great ones out there. Hmm, if you guys think of some, let me know. So I think... Where is the pad? Is it up on top of that? I think it is, so we're going to have to jump up there. I'm not able to exit, am I? Just the game. Okay. So it's not exactly like Mario 64, where you can just choose... Alright, I'm gonna leave the game now. Ah, that thing was back, or I never got rid of it in the first place. <laughs> Up here... And I got the Grunty Switch, right? Yeah, so I think we're good. We got both honeycomb pieces. And we should be good to go. We got the Bubble Gloop Swamp thing, we chatted with Brentilda. Yeah, I think we completed this area. Awesome. <laughs> I almost didn't make that jump there. Oh, sorry, Grunty. Gonna have to save it for another time. <laughs> and then there's that door that we unlocked before. However, I believe... First, I'm gonna want to go over this way. Because we hit that Grunty switch. And it should have made Grunty's eyes pop out. So let's take a look at that. Alright. Oh, and we were already right in the spot where it was going to show up. Great. Okay, so I think with that we've completed everything up to this area. We got that pot, we got the Clanker's Cavern thing up there. We completed Clanker's Cavern. We got the Bubble Gloop Swamp unlock there. Let's go take a look at the area that we actually unlocked with 180 notes. Again, I, I knew that it was too early in the game for them to expect the player to already have 180 notes. 60 notes on average from each of the three levels is a lot more reasonable, and whoa! We're gonna take care of this enemy real quick. Or not, I guess. <laughs> We're gonna take care of the enemy so that we can, in a relaxed manner, take a look around. Look at this. I love the look of this grunty right in the middle here. Pointing in two different directions, obviously, you can go. Obviously, a Jiggy also hidden within Grunty. We're going to have to figure out how to get that later on. And a not-so-nice-looking fish waiting for us. So, we can go either this way up here, or we can go over this way. I don't remember which is actually the way to go initially. 
I think it's this way. But either way, we're going to explore more of this area in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was fun. Clinker's Cavern is a really cool level. I'm not as big a fan of, like, underwater levels, so it never really ranks highly on my Banjo-Kazooie level list. But, but it's still a great level in and of itself, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. But until the next episode of Banjo-Kazooie, this is Movie Night Zero, and this mission is complete. I couldn't help myself, that's too funny.